In the last few videos, we have been speaking about timers and interrupts. In this video, we'll be uh, talking about the external interrupts. And uh, depending on the in the IC or the microcontroller that you have, the number of external interrupts vary. So on this particular 80 mega 32, we have three interrupts. And these three interrupts are on pin two, three. So this is port D2, we have interrupt zero, port D3, we have interrupt one, and there is uh, one more interrupt on port B2. So, so these are the three interrupts on 80 mega 32. So in this tutorial with a small example, we'll see how we can use these as well. Now, so I'll be demonstrating the interrupt zero and interrupt one in this particular video. Now what you do is we would connect two switches. So uh, we have seen this as to how we connect a switch. So we pull it uh, to VCC with a pull-up resistor and then we connect a switch between this pin and ground and this goes to port D2. Similarly, we'll connect one more switch. So let's say this is S1 is connected to port D2. Similarly, we'll connect one more switch, similar switch to port D3. And what we do is we also have an LCD connected as with the previous video to port C. So we have an LCD here. So what, what we do in this video is I would show you how we could switch between these two. Um, I mean, when you press switch one, interrupt zero gets uh, generated and will display a message in on LCD, uh, a corresponding message on LCD. And when switch two is pressed, we will change the message uh, so that we know that you know, the interrupt is generated by switch two. So before we go ahead and do this, let us look, go ahead and look at the basics and what resistors we need to configure in order to use the interrupt. Now, the first thing as we did with the previous video, we need to enable the global interrupt and th that is done by the SEI instruction. And what it does is it sets the I bit in SREG register. So we have seen this in timer interrupts as well. So to next to select individual interrupts, what we need to do is we need to configure the configure the GICR resistor. So this is general interrupt control resistor. So let us go ahead and look at what we have on this. So uh, the, the naming of the bits is not uh, in, in the order we expect. So first we have INT1, then we have INT0, and then we have INT2. So these, this is the D7 bit, D6, uh, and D5. And there are some other bits which we you know, do not require for this tutorial. So uh, we have this. So this is D0. Uh, so there are some other bits here, uh, D0 to D4. Uh, so we have some bits. So what we really require is the three, these three bits. So setting up each of these bits will enable the corresponding interrupt. And I'll be demonstrating INT1 and INT0 in this particular tutorial. Now, apart from this, uh, what do we need to know? Now, so let us speak about a little more about interrupts and how they work. Now, the normal code or the uh, when we are writing C program and we write this particular main code and so this this will be on a microcontroller this could i mean we write a while one and then we write all the code inside this so so what happens here is this code will be repeating itself all the while okay so this uh, in all the embedded systems you know this is uh, this is a loop which keeps running all the time as soon as the system is turned on it, it keeps running now to accept internal requests from other devices which are connected we use these particular interrupts now there are a few things that we really do not 
uh, do it when we are programming in C, but you need to know them. So let's say that you know this is the normal execution that is happening. So whatever code is uh, over here, it is getting executed. So whenever an interrupt occurs in between, uh, you know the the code that is executing right now, uh, you know it is left at that point and this context is saved uh, by the microcontroller and in C if you're writing in assembly we need to take care of stack and all of that but when you're writing in C the compiler does that for you it saves the con context and then goes to the interrupt service routine now it will go there it will execute the interrupt service routine and it will come back now if you remember you know the interrupt vector table which we had seen in the uh, first interrupts video you could have observed that you could observe that you know the interrupts are arranged in some something of this sort so the first location on the rom or the flash is you know reserved this is 0 x z 0 0 and this is reserved for the reset and immediately after that, uh, you know, two locations are reserved for that. And immediately after that, we have uh, int zero and then int one. So this is int one. And the address for this is uh, in hexadecimal, it's R in a rather than decimal. This is zero x zero two and this is zero x zero four. Now, one more thing you need to know is, uh, you know, we had discussed there in the introductory videos that the memory is arranged as 16 bits or two bytes per location. So what you have is for one interrupt, there are just 16 bytes. So we know that you know we cannot write any interrupt service routine in just these. So what these locations merely have is a jump instruction in assembly. So that instruction jumps to the actual interrupt service routine uh, that, that we write. Uh, but in this case, when you're programming in C, we need not worry about uh, these details. Okay, so let us go ahead and configure these two interrupts and you know let's see how these work and before we go ahead and do that there's one more resistor that uh, you know i need to speak and this resistor it, it's called the mcu cr now what this resistor does is it defines what kind of interrupt uh, we have now by that what i mean is uh, like say we have a switch which is uh, pulled high all the time so this would be logic one and whenever we press the switch, it goes down to logic zero. And if we press and hold it, uh, you know, it, it remains zero. And when we release it, it comes back. Okay. And then uh, it, it continues to remain high. Now, interrupt can be triggered at various points on this. Okay. Now, if a interrupt is triggered at this particular point, it is called the you know uh, what do you call call this this is called the falling edge interrupt so the edge is falling and then if you trigger an interrupt at this particular level the entire low level it's called the low level interrupt and if it is triggered uh, if it is triggered when it is going from 0 to 1 it's called the rising edge interrupt okay so this is rising edge all right so uh, this we get to configure in the mcu cr resistor and this configuration it holds good for only interrupt zero and interrupt one so this is for int0 and int1. So there's a similar resistor called the MCU CSR. So this is just my MCU control resistor this is control and status resistor. So the configuration would be similar and there's one more difference. So the int0 and int1, these are, these are both edge and level triggered interrupts so int0 and 1 you can configure them to work in any of these fashion but the int1 which is configured in using mcu 
MCU CSR, you know, it is just a level triggered, a low level triggered interrupt. So it does not have an option to be to be triggered on rising and falling edges. So let us go ahead and look at the MCU CR resistor. Now again, this resistor has eight bits. So it's an eight bit resistor and we just need to worry about the four bits. So the first bit, it's the, it's called the ISC 0, 0 and the next bit is ISC 0, 1 and you could guess the next one ISC 1, 0 and the next is ISC 1, 1 and we really need not bother about all the remaining four remaining four bits these are don't care for us now for for this again uh, you know so this is basically uh, for the interrupt int 0 and this is for int 1 now Again, so both the options, since uh, both the interrupts have same features, both the options are identical. So just write down for the interrupt zero and similar thing would hold good for interrupt one. So if these two bits are zero, zero, then the interrupt that we have is a low level triggered interrupt. So this interrupt is triggered when we have a low level. And, and then if it is zero one, the interrupt is triggered on both the edges. So it's called the level change. So anytime it goes from uh, one to zero or zero to one and interrupt is generated. So this is uh, any logic change. Now the next combination for the next combination, what we have is a falling edge triggered interrupt. And that makes it, uh, you know, for this particular falling edge, uh, sorry, it, yeah, uh, the falling edge triggered interrupt and if it is 1-1, one, one, it is the rising edge triggered interrupt. So we could configure the two switches to generate any of these uh, type of interrupts, but we would go ahead and configure this. Now, to just to sh again uh, tell you what, what should happen, okay, so the resistor is pulled up, I mean the switch is pulled up through a resistor to ECC okay and this pin goes to the int0 and an int1 so there are two switches so now so so what you could see is it would always be high when when i press the switch it goes low and it remains low uh, till the time i press the switch and if i release the switch only then we get a low to high transition and which is you know rising edge and that should trigger an interrupt so uh, you could try you could configure both the switches in two different ways and see how it works but for now I'll just uh, configure it with the last option so having said that so the MCU CR uh, resistor value for that would be 0x0 since uh, we don't care what the uh, the higher nibble is the lower nibble should be 1111 which is 0x 0f all right so what should we do in order to configure the interrupt let's uh, let's write it down and then go ahead and uh, code it first we need to enable the global interrupts then we need to enable the individual interrupts using the gicr resistor and before we do go ahead and enable them we we could we would rather go ahead and configure them and we could configure using the using the register we just discussed and it's MCU CR. So we'll follow these steps, write a simple program and we'll show how these interrupts work. Let us go ahead and code this thing and see how it works. Now I included the interrupt.h file to include the interrupts and to use the LCD, use the LCD library, lcd.h. Now first thing first, let us go ahead and you know uh, configure the interrupts so before so to configure the interrupts what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to configure the resistors okay so 
the, the resistor is GICR and return on ID zero first one shifted by ID zero then we would turn on ID one Okay, so after you go ahead and do that, uh, we also need to configure uh, them as rising edge interrupts. So to do that, we have the MCUCR resistor, MCUCR, and that equals 0x0f. We have seen this, and after that, we would go ahead and enable the global interrupts so that the interrupts are, uh, you know, en enabled. So before we do that, let's uh, initialize the LCD as well. So LCD is initialized, then we go ahead and enable the global interrupts. Now we could do this in any order, but uh, I would rather enable all the interrupts when you have initialized all the peripherals. Okay, so we've done that, then we need to write down, uh, write down what happens when an interrupt occurs. So in the main program, you're writing nothing. So it just waits all the while, okay? Uh, and um, when you're using it in a project you would have your main code here and uh, and it would be running always and whenever an interrupt occurs the interrupt service routine would execute now let us write the interrupt service routine for interrupt zero so this is int zero vector and so what you do is whenever this happens the LCD will go to line one and it would display a message. Hi interrupt. Hi int one. So this is int zero. Okay, so this is pretty simple. So I'd copy the same thing for int one. This is 91 vector, and the message would simply say I 91. So, so basically, this is it. I hope I've not missed anything. So, let me compile it. Yes, and to uh, just wind it up. So, what I've done is we have enabled the individual interrupt first, then we have enabled the uh, you have configured the interrupt to be. Um, high level uh, interrupts or sorry the rising edge triggered interrupts and then we initialize the LCD and we have turned on the global interrupts and when an interrupt occurs when interrupt zero occurs it displays a string on LCD similarly uh, a different message for interrupt one so we'll go ahead upload this and I'll show you the demo on the uh, board okay so I uploaded the code and the two switches that you see here uh, this is connected to int0 and this is connected to int1 now uh, what you could observe is and it is in the main code and we have not done anything we just initialize the display and the cursor is in position 0 line 0 position 0 now observe as I press this switch nothing happens I have pressed and hold so you not still got the rising edge if I leave the switch uh, you know it would the switch the pin would come back to VCC and you would get a rising wedge and as soon as it happens it goes to interrupt one and I can switch fast between both of the interrupts and uh, you know I could I'll show you again so let's say with int0 if I press uh, so it's still in int0 so I'll show you with int1 now if I press uh, you know interrupt is not generated only when I re release you get a rising edge and then interrupt occurs now you could try out with the level triggered interrupt interrupt 2 and you know the other combinations of interrupt 0 and 1 thank you for watching do not forget to subscribe